I hadn't given this any thought at the time, but clearly uh, this chassis is also for an expanded model. We can see that the plate here on the right side, the one that's covered with flowers and crap, is uh, has provisions for other screws. So there was a another board here or a much larger board that went into this. Uh, for what I don't know, I'm not a big aficionado of early to mid-70s Zenith radios, but I wanted to point that out because I, I just never noticed that. Naturally, I know where to find all of the screws and the supporting brackets because once I took them off, I put them right back where I found them. It's a trick I learned a long time ago to save me a lot of grief. Also, um, take a good shot of this uh, uh, a picture, even though I have it as a printout, because I don't 100% trust the printout. It's good to have the picture that came with the radio. I'll snap a photo. We'll get all the inner workings in first, and we'll do the speaker separately. And then I will solder the uh, wired connections that were severed, uh, or that I had severed, to disconnect the speaker from it. That way I don't risk damaging the speaker during the installation. Also, this piece of flashing here goes over the selector switch uh, to black that out when it goes into the unit that needs to be reinstalled too. That will go over here in such a way as it won't fall out when I reinstall it, after I give it a cleaning. It has to be in the full closed position in order to get that screw installed on this uh in this hole way down here i've managed to secure all three of the screws with their original grommets back in without breaking anything which is a miracle because this uh, plastic is extremely brittle that portion is done i'll inspect everything on the front put the knobs back in and then put in the speaker everything looks aligned black car is in everything's lined up I'll put the knobs on right quick. Knobs are back on. Working fine. Tuning works fine. This portion of the radio is now assembled. We'll go back to the back of the unit so we can install the speaker. I'm gonna undo this bracket right here right quick with these two screws. In on some teeth that uh, hold over the uh, speaker in the back and some guides on the side. And then I'll put the rail on to secure it in the front. Rails in, speaker secured. Now we'll solder the uh, three wire connections. We soldered all the connections to the speaker. Had to make a little extension for the black one. It was just too short to reconnect directly. Um, make sure everything is sound in this unit and we will fire it back up again. Another observation is, you know, uh, it's apparent. Speaker's in absolutely terrible position. On the bottom of the radio, you'd think they would have put the speaker up front, but the flowers were more important or put it on top or whatever. It is what it is. But um, it's in the AM position now. I got power going to it. Be able to turn it on from the front. It's sitting in the AM position. I'll roll this up to uh, under 550 and we'll get started. Particular account. And uh, the neat thing is that it does, uh, day one, it gives a 15% bonus on top of whatever has gone into playoffs. Right. that uh, are up and coming and uh, I tell you Wesley you're, at, you're looking for Gina you know, it's like Carmen San Diego where in the world is Carmen there's Stanley's complete two part teaching set stories we you have questions about a drug, a product, or a class action consumer issue. That's sounds where really the nice. will act as a place. I mean, it sounds really clear. Remember, uh, I don't have the equipment to uh, calibrate FM. I do have the equipment to calibrate AM. We're going to have to listen to this during the nighttime to see how strong the AM really is. It's not quite late enough to do that. Probably another couple of hours. But this is the FM. 20% off MSRP and 0% financing. Arms around you, you know you don't want Before making a way downtown tonight I should point out that the FM antenna is not even connected It's still sitting on the shelf Along and east of I-4 Three bonus months So this is running without the antenna So there you go, so it's assembled we could work on um, 
the AM uh, uh, calibration and adding the uh, FM antenna once the unit can be closed up. I've turned on the RF signal generator. I'm going to let this thing cook for a while so it stabilizes. Adding to the mix will be the IM11, which also takes a bit of time to stabilize as it heats up. This will be used for the calibration of the AM as a monitoring device. We know the first portion of this procedure is going to be um, the 455, the IF frequency. Uh, it says it requires a modulated signal of 400 hertz at 30% modulation. It's going to use whatever this is going to provide, which is around that. Um, set the uh, dial to 600 kilohertz. I have done so. Should probably set that to AM. And these are going to be our three adjusting slugs, and we're adjusting for maximum 206, 207, and 208, and going around back and forth over and over again until we get it right. Just standard procedure. The tie point is test point I, and that is the uh, CIE, the open air capacitor. The other side is ground, and that's what this will be connected to. I'd hook it up to the oscilloscope first just to see where it was at and I set this up before I hooked up the oscilloscope I wanted to know how close I would get it turns out 456.5 kilohertz looking for 455 so that's almost on the money while the scope is there I'll, I'll, I'll bring it in but yeah wow not bad at all you know especially for for uh, tube equipment you know this was just restored obviously but yeah, that is a nice looking modulated waveform too. I brought it a hair down of 455.1. We're going to go with that. I'm not going to be too picky. I just wanted to see how close I could get it. And while I was there, I adjusted it. We're going to turn on the radio. We're just going to check to see if we're going to hear that tone. It should be coming through. Just fire this up right quick. Okay, we are hearing the tone so very good I'll find a comfortable position probably overdriving this thing maybe attenuate it I'll take a look and then and then we'll start the calibration procedure so 206 is this big coil uh, right here the big uh, metal one that's all the way on the left uh, almost against the wall there on the second row 207 is the white one above the orange one in the middle and 208 is off to the right. It's the black one just above the pink one. And those are the three all on the second level in support of the AM adjustments. Got a comfortable volume set up right now. We can see a level showing on the VTVM. And now I'm going to start adjusting the slugs uh, to get this to a maximum deflection. With the white one right now, we can see... Right about there, the maximum point. Basically, how I'm doing it. I'm able to get some gains out of the, uh, the black colored coil. And brought it up from 2 to 1 dash past 2, about there. So that one improved slightly. Now I'm going to go to uh, this coil, which is the most difficult. I use a special tool for it. At this point, I have all three. At this point, I have all three of the coils uh, tuned optimally uh, to maximum peak on the IM11. I believe this would conclude the uh, AM calibration for this unit uh, to the best of the ability that this can be done on this unit. Uh, FM, not really much I could do. I don't have equipment and uh, uh, sweep generators and whatnot to do FM. So FM is going to be what it is. So I'm going to set this thing back up uh connect the fm antenna which up until now i haven't done before and we'll give a listen it's also in the evening time right now so we can hear what the am sounds like now that the am has been calibrated and listen to the fm as well i was able to reconnect these connections way down here which is not as easy as i thought but that's the antenna connections uh, for the unit in the back um f and g I mean, think of it what you will, but those are, that's the ground and something else. So, 
that's the FM antenna in the ground. That's what it is. So that's the uh, the connections there. Covers back on and nothing's broken. It's an absolute miracle. The leaf screw here uh, holds the cable into position coming out of there. So we can now connect the antenna screw. The antenna is reconnected and the assembly is now finished. Let's test out the radio. Radio is booming now. Uh, number one on the AM side because of the uh, adjustments that were done on the IF and the FM side because it has an antenna. I'll do a very quick scan through the AM now. Is isn't just based on that. .com or call 1-800-MARINE. You can hear a lot of different stations mixed in as well. Uh, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Open mic with Mike Bianchi. Eight seven five twenty one twenty one. That's eight hundred eight seven five twenty one twenty. Just so many stations on there in between. Hablemos del tenis porque la tenista estadounidense Serena Williams. Listen online or on your smartphone. And there you go. I'm at the end. I'm going to switch the FM side of the dial now to scan through, which shouldn't have as much clutter on it. But uh, this one sounds a lot better having an antenna now, so here we go. Every day. Listen to how many are so... In the world, stop dreaming, start flying. The three big things you need to... Imagínate todo lo que podrías lograr al aprender. And that's the scan of the FM side. Picks up a lot of stations both near and far as well. And that was on the AFC. The other test is to make sure that the dial indication that's shown on the radio is in the correct position, obviously. And on the uh, paper, it talks about uh, using the extremes uh, for the measurement. And it's uh, 1.6 megahertz or 1600 kilohertz and 600 megahertz as well as 1400 and 600 uh, in this uh, second iteration. So what I did was I've set this up for uh, 1.6 and this is actually very precise. This is in fact 1.6. I verified that with the oscilloscope by disconnecting and hooking up the probe. And then I have tuned the radio to 1.6. Obviously with parallax, uh, it doesn't look like it, but uh, down here it is in fact on the correct position. And so I'm able to talk in the video. I've switched it up to uh, AFC FM. But if I turn up the volume here, get a little static, and switch this to AM, so we can see that we can hear the tone that's being generated from here. And this is just a, a hanging antenna in the back. That's all this is. See, I move it away and it gets... I just leave it in the cardboard is all it's doing. And if I move it away from 1600, it's gone. Right on the 1600 dash. There it is. So, the top extreme is fine. Wouldn't be doing any adjustment. 
I'll go to the other uh, setting now that they list. Uh, going to the other setting, I rehook the oscilloscope and we can see that I'm at 1600 and I'll be shutting off modulation. We can see 1.6 megahertz and I'll just be moving it down uh, to the other uh, position here and we want to bring it up to uh, about 600. Wait for that to update, that's about 600. Drop it just a little and then I'll hook that up to the uh, radio again. We'll retest the 600 position. I've got it on about 600.2. Turn the modulation back on. <clears throat> and I'll turn the radio back to AM. And we'll tune it up to 600. Minute seven. Now I need to connect the antenna to the back of the radio. I'll switch back to AM now and we'll hear the uh, waveform come through. You can see exactly where it's the strongest. Right there. And if I tip the radio up so we can look at the uh, actual position so we don't have the parallax, you can see it's just about on 600 so the AM uh, calibration for the dial just about perfect wouldn't make any adjustment no idea if this is gonna work on FM but I have set this up for 88 megahertz this is all the way on the top F band and I'm gonna turn on modulation and we're gonna see if we could uh, set up FM in the same manner this time instead of floating the wire I've actually connected it to the rear antenna uh, FM jack directly and I have taken it off of AFC and put it directly on FM sure enough check this out right on 88 megahertz there it is so there you go bottom band to FM calibrated we'll look at the top of the band we're right at about what the limitations of this RF signal generator can do, uh, but it still does it well uh, in previous videos. Uh, documents a lot of work that was done with this RF signal generator to uh, get a nice frequency response at all of the ranges. Now very dynamic. Uh, what we're seeing here, however, right now is due to the fact that we're working with such an extremely high frequency with no shielding here. You know, this is obviously unacceptable. Uh, uh, type of coupling uh, for something at 107 megahertz and 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 we're seeing a, a superimposed if you were to take a picture and look at this we're, we're seeing superimposed a 60 Hertz uh, um, modulation over this as a um, power coming through uh, different appliances this has already been checked that's how I know this and otherwise uh, it's very clean for what it is uh, getting back to it uh, I'm going to take this 108 now and hook it back up to this antenna and we're going to check the top of this FM band. Sure enough, uh, as expected, you hear a nice clean tone right here. Lift the radio up, 108 megahertz. Uh, this, is, uh, this is pretty conclusive that everything here is perfectly calibrated. We're not going to make any more adjustments. Also, this has... Uh, proved to run uh, very nicely for this test, for uh, all the tests on this, both AM and FM, even though this wasn't very helpful for any FM calibration, which wasn't done, but yeah, very happy with that. Uh, that's it for any calibration that's going to be done on this unit. Now it's time to box it back up and give it back. This radio is finished. Original styrofoam is now back in place. This concludes the unboxing, subsequent repair, and reboxing of this Zenith solid state radio. Thank you very much for watching.